everybody welcome back to the channel today we're actually at a v4 tesla supercharger here and we're gonna supercharge our ford f-150 lightning here with the magic dock that is located right inside this v4 here so this magic dock's attached to the actual tesla supercharger and so we're going to then go over and supercharge the f-150 lightning let's get this video started right now all right, so I wanted to show you how you actually get the magic dock from the Tesla supercharger, especially here on this V4. So the little button here, you're going to press and hold for two seconds. You'll hear a little click. You press up, and then you pull down, and then it comes right out with the magic dock on it. All right, so one of the advantages that you have with the V4 superchargers here from Tesla is the cords are longer, and they made these specifically so you can stretch to your F-150 Lightnings and other uh, CCS ports uh, adapters that uh, the regular V3s weren't able to do. So a little longer cord gives me ability to park in a regular parking spot, plug right in, and then be able to start charging my F-150 Lightning. Now, here's the good news. The F-150 Lightning that I have right here is actually hooked up to plug and charge. So this vehicle is actually starting um, to, to hook up two Tesla systems here, and it's gonna charge my card through my Tesla app um, and it's going to start charging this vehicle. Now, we are at 20% charge here on this vehicle, and we're going to charge it to 80%. All right, so I'm inside the, the truck now here. So I've already got 2% of battery, 3% there, uh, and you'll see that I'm charging at 165 kilowatts. Now, I will say I had to do the Tesla V4 twice. I had to plug it in. First time gave me a fault, and then I had to actually go in the app and then uh, click charge here with the, the right stall, and then it actually hooked up. So I'm sure that's something to do with the software. Sorry, I got the kids in the background. So you'll see I got the music playing for some of the kids there. Uh, but let's go over here to our charging um on the actual vehicle here um so charge settings right there i couldn't find the button sorry guys but you're going to see here and i'm going to set it to an 80 percent charge limit here instead of the 90 percent that ford has a as a default there but it's going to basically take us about uh let's go about 24 minutes if you hear my son in the background you'll know why we're actually doing this as a little family event today but 24 minutes to charge from 20 percent all the way up to uh 80 percent which is not bad at all so let's uh, continue on this process and then uh, we'll also find out how much this exactly cost me all right so we're right around 65 percent and we have actually seen a dip in the kilowatts um, that the uh, Ford F-150 Lightning is accepting from the Tesla Supercharger. And it's down to right around 125 right now versus where we were at 160, 170 um, during the peaks there, which is normal because the battery's now getting more full. And so the, the slowing of the speed's happening there as you get closer to 80%. And then once you pass 80%, it really falls off because that battery's really starting to get full. And so it doesn't take as much energy um, into the battery pack from the charger. So um, we were kind of hitting that plateau where it's now starting to come down a little bit, which is completely normal. But I wanted, wanted to talk about the V4 uh, supercharger from Tesla a little bit while we're out here waiting for the, the Ford F-150 Lightning to charge up. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and I'm gonna show you the side of this. So we're gonna look at the V4 here a little bit on the side. And the biggest thing you're gonna see really is that this is taller than the version three. It's not, it doesn't have that opening like the version three has, but the biggest difference really is the cord running all the way around. It's a longer cord. So again, it can fit to the like uh, trucks like the F-150 Lightning, the Rivians, the Fords, the GM products that are all out there. Uh, plus, the version three also has the ability for one, the magic dock comes standard on that as well. The, the I've also seen on the internet where there's actually a screen here, a credit card machine, uh, like a credit or not even credit uh, screen, but just a screen in general where it shows um, some, some of the information. But this one actually doesn't have it. And maybe this is a version before they actually put the screen in. But the ones I'm at here does not have the little screen on them. Uh, but this is currently charging at 250 kilowatts. In the future, they're going to be closer to 350 kilowatts. Now, the biggest thing is, even though some of these machines may bump up to 350 on the kilowatts, doesn't mean that your vehicle is going to take that 350 uh, kilowatts. There's vehicles like the F-150 Lightning that are capped out where they don't have the ability to go all the way up to that 350 um, kilowatt hour charging there. So, you know, for me, 250 to 350 really wouldn't make that much of a difference, but there are cars out there that do accept those uh, bigger power outputs from the V4s. So we're currently at 68% now and we're starting to charge. We're continuing charging, you hear that fan coming on 
and uh, the fan staying on there on the uh, supercharger but we're at um you know right out about 70 percent actually on the charge now and you're going to see that the uh the uh, fourth of the five rings are starting to or it is illuminating now and that basically means that it's charging. Once it hits 80%, that will light up solid like these, and then it'll start charging on this one. For our instance, we won't really get there because um, we're stopping at 80%. But overall, a really good experience. Still waiting for the totals to come out, but it's been a lot of energy put in the battery pack so far. So stay tuned, we got some more statistics coming. All right, so we just hit 80%. The, the truck originally told us we would be done right around 340. We got done 344, so not hateful, four extra minutes there. Um, but it's, it's you know, I'm sure it's impossible uh, to predict exactly what's gonna, the power is gonna be coming in and out of the truck there uh, and a little bit of loss from the, the charging there. So uh, four minutes, not uh, hateful there. And just a total, uh, we went from 315 to 344. So right around 30 minutes to charge from 20% all the way up to 80%. Uh, and the vehicle uh, started out right around one 160 to 170 on the kilowatts and then drop down to about 80 kilowatts or actually it was 125 uh, kilowatts going into the battery and then about down to about 87 85 ish um, towards the end there so uh, as the the charge curve went down of course the time uh, started adding up a little bit quicker uh, but it did a really good job tesla really did a good job um, uh, charging my f-150 lightning now we're going to unplug it here and so i just want to show you that process uh, once you stop the charging you can just press this button on top and then just pull out a little hard with one hand but uh, you pull out and then you literally slide it in to the uh the charge here right in and then it goes right up and you're in secure. So really an easy process. Um, I'm sure it will get better and better over time. And I'm really happy that Tesla has given the, uh, the, the people who have CCS charges the ability to charge at Tesla uh, because Tesla's network is a lot more reliable. There's also a lot more out there. And so it makes it easier to own and, and really buy a, uh, a truck like this F-150 Lightning that you can buy a full electric and not have to worry about charging when you're traveling. Now, let's talk about how many kilowatts went into the battery. 20% to 80%, 61.2, a little extra after that, but 61.2 kilowatts went into the battery pack. And how much did that cost me? $33, just over $33 there, the exact total, I'm, I'm putting the screenshot in there, but just over $33 to charge uh, from 20% to 80%. Now I know they're gonna say, ah, that guy, that's a lot of money, you might as well just buy a gas truck. Yes. It's not the cheapest thing when you're going to charge at a fast charger. The place you're going to save money on these electric trucks and these electric vehicles is charging at home. But the cool thing is, and the reason we're doing this test, is because, you know, we as Americans, we drive all over the place. We travel. And so it's nice to have Tesla um, with their supercharging network to be able to then charge your truck to get to other places. Uh, I live in Maryland and we drive to Tennessee, to Virginia, uh, up north to Pennsylvania all the time. And it's good to have um, these superchargers in place where we can actually charge our truck and continue on our journey and then get back home. So overall, a good job. Um, the cost on it, here's the thing, if you fill up a regular F-150, from 20% or, or fourth a tank, all the way up to uh, just over three fourths a tank. Let's be honest, guys, you're gonna be spending 30 plus dollars there too. So it's not like you're spending that much more money and you get the cost savings of charging at home on a normal day. If you have any questions, please put them down in the comment section. And if you could also hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I appreciate you guys watching this far and we'll see you in the next video.